You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Buzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menunos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's Heart of Dixie After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Heart of Dixie After Show. Hello everyone, welcome back to another after show here at AfterBuzz TV for Heart of Dixie. This is season 3, episode 11, One More Last Chance. I'm Paige Sullivan, your host, joined by my lovely co-host. Hi, I'm Christine Archer. Hey guys, it's Michelle Renee. And our special guest. Yeah. Hi, I'm Mallory Moy. Hi. Plays Wanda. Yes, we're happy to have you back. She joined us last year and she's back again. So yes, it's good to be back. Welcome. Uh, we will break down this episode. There was a lot of changes in relationships going on and... Yeah the town in general yeah and we had been predicting like which couple was gonna break up and there was actually two breakups this yeah. episode so mm-hmm. do we, we count, didn't see that coming do we count brick and shelby as a breakup like i feel like that was like a little weird thing that happened and then it just stopped happening well they just got together last episode and then they yeah. broke up this episode <laughs> yeah so. it was very short-lived okay. yeah i think we we knew that would be short-lived though. yeah okay. brick as another as a dad like i just felt like it wouldn't work Right. Yeah. 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 He's so much older than her. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but not, I do like them together. I like, I like them a them. lot. I like them together. I feel bad for him. It wasn't Poor his Brick. kid, though. Yeah, yeah I you know. know. I don't know. I was I was a little surprised, to be honest. I, kind, I don't know. I feel like he was at the point, at least in his life, where he was ready for a wife maybe not for a kid especially it wasn't since it wasn't his kid but i thought i I thought they might last for a while especially after she was like there and gone and almost left again once she moved into his house and then now she's gone again i Mm -hmm. i can't really imagine them bringing her back into the show but i think it's kind of weird that we never got to like see her have the baby and like Kind of see how that played out. And, like, what happens to the cabaret? Right. <laughs> what happens yeah. to that? Is that, know, where, it. is that where Lemon comes back in, though? It's like she comes back, she buys mm. it, and now it's Lemon's. Like, she wanted it to be. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe so. Maybe. Oh, I don't know. Wow. Who knows? But <laughs> So it all starts out. We see Zoe and Joel. I almost said Zoe and Wade. Zoe and Joel, oh. and they're looking for an apartment, and they can't seem to agree on any of it. Um and they they are having an issue trying to figure it out. They bump into Wade, who is trying to get Harley to like him, and he doesn't. So, do we think it's because it's just another guy in his mom's life? That's what I figured. I think so. I mean, I yeah, especially being kind of young. I don't know exactly how old Harley was, but he's I'm eight. Eight. Okay, yeah, eight years old. I think that's kind of a weird age to just have like a male figure who you don't know if he's going to stick around. You don't know, you mm-hmm. know, how long he's going to be there for. And he just met him too. And I'm sure, I mean, they just started dating within the past two or three episodes, really. So I I think it's just a typical kid mm-hmm. not liking whoever his mom's going to date, no matter who it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think, I don't know, am I correct in saying that this is the first relationship that his mom has had since yes. she divorced from his dad? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that, you know, has got to be that's a really hard milestone. for a child to see his mom being with someone that's not his father mm-hmm. and someone so different from him also like i feel like joel would be a better like stepdad <laughs> yeah. for him than wade that's so mm-hmm. true i think we were talking when we saw the previous last last week we were looking and we were saying it doesn't like they don't really match up harley and wade but you could see yeah. joel and yeah. harley being together right i i also feel like i mean just realistically outside of like a tv show i i think the sex and all that that he was aiming for should probably happen before meeting the kid because if it doesn't work out now that your kids met this guy and lost his salamander and like all this traumatic <laughs> right. experience and if they don't work out which i personally don't think they're going to last very long not very long <laughs> but i don't think they'll go for the long run then it's kind of leaving Harley without another male figure, which I think is like... That's true. That's traumatizing. Yeah. It's a big deal to introduce your child to someone new. Exactly. I feel like I learned this from Teen Mom. They're like, oh, I can't introduce (laughs) the boyfriend yet to the baby. But I just felt like it was early. But Mm -hmm. Harley seems to stand on his own two feet. I mean, he is an opinionated boy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So bad. Yeah, I agree. I I felt he was fresh. I was like, ooh. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I don't think that people... I mean, I don't have any children, so it's kind of hard for me to say, but... I don't like when parents let their child run their life, but then at the same time, I get that like your relationship with your child is obviously more important than a relationship with mm-hmm. a man that may or may not 
you know, things may or may not work out. So I don't know. I just thought that in some instances in the show, they were letting him, Harley, little Harley, be too grown. Like, yeah. he's a child. Like, zip your lip and <laughs> sit there. Dictating and, everything. Yeah. And especially in the South, like, I don't know. I feel like that's one of the, like, cardinal rules of a child in the South is, like, you are to be seen and not heard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, that's what my true. grandmother used to yeah. say. <laughs> <laughs> that I agree. Not true. That's for sure. No. no. Yeah. And he talks about morbid things for an God, eight-year-old. I know. Like, oh, what's his name? Cecil's going to kill you when and you're asleep. Yeah. And he's going to take your brains, brains up in the toy. I, don't know. I do <laughs> think Wade's really sweet with him, though. Mm-hmm. I think Wade's pretty good with kids. It's he really is. It's nice to see that side of him. I feel like, like Zoe said, she took a dig at him. She's like, oh, you guys are on the same, like, mental level. Yeah. <laughs> and which I think is true, though, for somebody like Wade, where he's all about the fun. It's easier for him to relate to a little kid as yeah. opposed mm-hmm. to everybody else around him who's all grown up. Yeah, he it's is like true. a little kid. He's always kind of been the, like, little kid of the bunch. Who, yeah. I don't know. I'm not, I'm I'm. Su- I, I think usually when you have people like that, though, they you almost expect them not to be very good with the kids. But I guess because he they can relate to them, mm-hmm. he gets along with them well. But right. I don't know. I feel like it's with parents. You know, you have that one parent who's always gonna like put you in your place, and the other one who like budges a little bit. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like Wade's the guy who would budge in yeah. that mm-hmm. place. But the whole thing is about Zoe and Joel are trying to get Winifred's house. Once they find out Wade's met Winifred and it's really that she hates New Yorkers apparently because of her ex-boyfriends. But then Zoe, I felt like there was this underlying story about Zoe and Wade this entire time where they're both talking each other up and how great they are. Mm -hmm. And it's like their relationships are going well, but you have this underlying thing going on. Yeah. Yeah, And they're both making sacrifices for for, each other. For the other one. Like, for instance, Zoe's like, oh, it was me that lost the salamander, mm-hmm. you know? And she knows that it's going to jeopardize the house, but she does it anyway because she wants the best for Wade. Mm-hmm. So I agree that there was definitely some... Yeah, and even how he says, you know, Zoe's going to annoy you and she's going to drive you crazy until she doesn't and mm-hmm. you love her. And it's yeah. like, oh, you don't say that about your ex, especially when you're trying to get with this kid's mom. <laughs> I don't know. And he made know. another comment... Um, he was talking about like Vivian and she, Zoe said something like have you liked you when have you been this way about oh. some woman and he was like well not since, since essentially her. like not since she since this crazy New, New Yorker world yeah. yeah. in town yeah and so I'm like mm, that was a little you know yeah. flirtatious moment I know I'm always rooting for them I really like Zade oh <laughs> so you're on team Zade I yeah. am team Zade I like them together I, I do too I, I do feel too. like they're the end game like they're yeah. they're gonna happen they are but this might be getting into predictions but then like at the end of the episode we see that Joel and her are buying a house together not even renting right. one so right like, that seems fast I'm I think like, this why is, are they doing this I think us? this is where it gets serious and we get a a breakup or something because when it, when things like that start happening and like they're going through the motions and maybe signing the papers or closing on the house that's when maybe Zoe or or Joel you know will have the epiphany like okay we're he said he's all in but I think maybe she'll get to that point and the little Harley mentioned it like which one of you is afraid of commitment I think they're gonna get there and then it's gonna like crumble down mm-hmm. You think that was some foreshadowing? Yeah, I, I do. Yeah, because remember, like when that we would s- make sense. Yeah, when we saw like Brick and Shelby like get engaged and then they like collapsed. It's like these big moments and the wedding between you know George and Lemon and poof that falls apart. <laughs> I mean, it's just I feel like if anything is going to break them up, it would be this big something big has to happen or or something serious where she has to consider that this isn't just like a relationship. It's like permanent. Yeah. yeah. Because if you buy a house together, I mean, that, that gets messy. You can kick somebody out of the bed and breakfast. But so I think that whole storyline, they don't get the house with Winifred. We get Joel and them buying a house, which I am I think will lead to, you know, a breakup. But it's it's interesting to see that these relationships are going so well for them. But for now. For, yeah. now. for now. For now. But that leads us to, you know, George and Lindley who aren't having the best relationship right now oh man yeah it looks like lindley's leaving yeah leaving town she was she <laughs> was a suddenly. good addition yeah <laughs> she was fun she stirred things up but i think we all knew she would be leaving at some point sorry i'm dying a room turn oh, no, i've been sick all weekend so ignore me if i'm coughing <laughs> for half the show, but yeah it's crack okay, anyway anyway pat on the back <laughs> there she goes she's alive but yeah no lindley's gone which we get at the end of the episode but it all starts off because her and tansy are trying to be friends And I think it was a case of, like, frenemies, like, keep your enemies closer. Yeah. Yeah. Friends close, enemies closer. Yeah. Definitely. That that would be really hard to be friends with your boyfriend's ex. Ex. 
Yeah. I don't think I could do that. No. <laughs> I'm glad it all played out like it did because yeah. whenever the, the episode started and they were friends, I was really confused. Like, wait, why are they friends? So it makes sense that you yeah. know, she was just doing that so she could sabotage her. And Did you think Tansy had ulterior motives or did you think she she was just being friends with Lindley? I just thought she maybe was lonely since she didn't Broke have, up a scooter. Yeah, she yeah. didn't have anyone. I don't know. But, well, that friendship disintegrated pretty quickly when she burnt her hair. And it's this whole story of like, oh, I didn't do it on purpose, but no, really, I did. And, oh, he thinks she did. And it starts this whole fight. Yeah. But it, it's almost as if Lindley just wanted to prove to George that he didn't care about her as much as he, he was mm. saying he did. Like, she yeah. did it, knew it would start a fight, and to see, like, how he would react to it. Because why else would you do it other than just to be mean? Like, solely to be mean? Um, I mean, I think it was a little bit of both. I think that she wanted to mess her hair up. And she, I mean, she said that she was kind of crazy in her past relationship. And she, what did she do to her ex-boyfriend's yard? Oh. I don't know. She, she did something to ruin something of her ex-boyfriend's. Mm-hmm. She mentioned last episode or either the episode before that. So I think she has those tendencies in her to act out when relationships aren't necessarily going her way. So I think it was that. And then I agree that I think she was trying to prove to George, you know, she just wanted George to admit, like, you still have these feelings for her. Mm -hmm. And so, Mallory, you mentioned you're a Zayn fan. What do you, are you a George Tucker Tansy (laughs) fan? Like, since George and Zoe are, like, off the table for you, like, where are you with that? God, I I love Tansy. Mm -hmm. Um... Also, just because I love Mercea, who plays her. <laughs> yeah, she's so, so I'm sweet. always rooting for Tansy and George because I want them to stay. I mean, probably ultimately, I feel like Tansy and Wade are probably a better fit mm-hmm. and Zoe and George. Um, so then that would be the perfect way for everyone to stay on the show. <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, I don't know. I was, I'm wondering if maybe George still hasn't found like the one for mm-hmm. him. I don't know. I do like him and Tansy together, but in some ways they seem so polar opposite. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, they do. And it seems almost too easy for him to fall back into Tansy yeah. right now. Yeah. How did you feel about he and Lindley? Because they hated it over here. Yeah. I, um, <laughs> I, um, I, yeah, I, I always like thought that was a strange yeah. mix. Uh, she's just so much younger and she's, and not even just younger, but she's very immature in how she will yeah. act out. And she's aggressive. She's very, very aggressive. aggressive. And mm-hmm. can yeah. we talk about their breakup too? We were talking about it earlier when the <laughs> yeah. show was on. It was so weird. Like they were fighting and she left the rammer jammer and then she was going home. Like, and then she's packing her bag. Within literally 45 seconds, they went from like having a little argument. They never even really broke up. I might have missed the breakup. Well, but, that like, was the breakup. That was like the mutual agreement it, that like, yeah, this but is at it. no point was it like, oh, I feel like it should have been a conversation of like, okay, yeah, like this is the reason, like it's over. Maybe I should go home, not just like, well, well and it was weird because it was very friendly too, though. She knew why he was breaking up with her, and he knew like it was done. Like I think they both, yeah, I think they just knew. And for her, she's not one to be like quiet about it. Like she's got to go out with a bang. She's got to hop on a flight that night. Like take the red eye out of there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for, and it wasn't even the hair thing. It was it was, was George. It was yeah. George yeah. and George Tansy. Right. So. Yeah, but I love them, like, the whole situation in the Rammer Jammer where Tansy's being all rude, calling her crazy. <laughs> yeah. And the, the lieutenant governor's like, oh, strange nickname. <laughs> yeah. Poor Lindley, though. I, I've never, like, seen the crazy eyes, but, like, we talked about it. We, like, know, like, what the crazy eyes are. But it, it's I'm sad to see her go. I think she could have stayed around in a different sense. Yeah. But then again, she probably would have gotten a little crazy on George and Tansy, knowing who she is. I just feel That's like... True. I mean, what are we on now? Episode 11, I guess. And she's been kind of a big character since episode one of the mm-hmm. season. And for her to just go that quickly was kind of a little weird to me, at least. But I, I don't know if she'll be back. I, it yeah. didn't really seem like it. But I guess we'll have to see in the upcoming episode. I feel like there's always a good chance that people will come back in Bluebell. <laughs> right? Is <that> a spoiler? <laughs> just, no, I no spoiler. I, no, I don't know anything about her coming back yet, but I'm, I feel like there's always a very good chance. That's yeah, true. I agree. Because we I thought Shelby was gone, back. too. Yeah. 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 I know. I was so surprised when they're bringing her back. And she's That's pregnant. Right. Again and preggers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. So, I mean, I guess we'll hop into that because that was the next couple that was having this big thing. Um, so, Shelby is living with Brick. They're, like, together. He's helping her shop for baby stuff. It just seemed to happen all very quickly. And 
then she starts freaking out because the lieutenant governor is coming. And this is all the scheme to save Bluebell. But she starts kind of freaking out about it. And turns out it's her baby daddy. Which A.B. finds out. Everybody, I feel like, spills their souls to Annabeth. Like, she's just the one you can tell. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I didn't see that one coming. I was very surprised. Did you? I totally saw it coming. Like, if it hadn't been revealed in this episode, that was going to be my prediction. I wrote it down. I'm like, Shelby's baby dad is the lieutenant governor. Really? I thought she slept with him. Although you missed the moment. she did. Yeah, there was a moment at the very beginning. That could have happened, but okay. Yeah. She did sleep with him. What do you mean? Well, no, no, no. So I thought she slept with him. I didn't think it was his baby. Like oh. I thought it was one of those things, like maybe, or oh. or like they were exes yeah, from dad. a long time ago, and he hated Shelby, like something like that. I, because she had said multiple times it was a sperm donor, so I believed her, for, you know, <laughs> because I took it, you know, as the truth. So I was thinking it was just going to be something, you know, very bluebell, like dramatic, and they hate each other, whatnot. So he wouldn't sign the papers. I didn't see the the baby. Thing. Yeah, I thought it was so strange that it, that um, little storyline was so quick mm-hmm. and over with. Like, I would expect that to happen over a few episodes. Maybe he's, like, staying in town for some reason. And then it kind of unfolds that he's her baby's dad. But I didn't understand why it was so quick. Like, she tells the story of them hooking up on this, like, kind of <laughs> sleazy one-night stand. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. then she contemplates whether or not she's going to tell him. She barges in, tells him. And then he's cool with it, cool enough with it to <laughs> offer her a move to Montgomery and he's going to like support the child. Like that's a lot in yeah, like a, oh, one, yeah. not, not even, even an episode. Not even. It, was like, it, it happened like yeah. towards the latter <laughs> yeah. half of the episode. So I don't know why that was so quick. I feel like maybe that leaves room for Shelby to come back when it all falls <laughs> exactly. apart. <laughs> exactly. That's true. Yeah. That's I true. mean, that could be it. I, yeah, like you get hit with news like that. I think people just react and like, a you know, they say fight or flight. Like I, he was probably just like, okay, we're <laughs> doing it. Like we're going to have this baby and, to me, though, it's strange that Shelby would be like, you know what? I'm just going to move to Montgomery and I'm just going to leave this new business and brick and all my friends and just up and leave with but, a stranger. Like, he's actually a stranger who you slept with true. one time. But I mean, what she's been kind of needing from brick is someone to support her and help her with the baby. And not necessarily financially, but like at the beginning of the episode, whenever she's like, look at these cute diapers. And Brick's kind of like, okay, yeah. Do you realize what parenthood's going to be like? It's like poop, food. Yeah, yeah. I think she wants someone that's going to like, you know, be super excited about the baby. Mm -hmm. And maybe him offering, you know, her to live with him or whatever. Maybe she thinks that's an indication that he's going to be really yeah involved in the child and he even says but it get, it's sad at one point where he's like I, I have to get excited about this i have to you know i want i'm gonna bring her out of her funk and then he goes to like tell her how excited she is and she's like uh well i'm moving with yeah. the baby daddy and i'll see you later i i felt bad for brick i did too no i feel like he's so lonely and he hasn't had like a real other than shelby like a real good healthy relationship since lemon's mother which obviously wasn't healthy because she left right. so i feel like if anybody needs something, it's probably him. Yeah. I don't know. I thought he yeah. had a good chance with, uh, what was her name before? Shelby. I don't know. I liked her, though. I can't remember. We I all liked her. Oh, she yeah. was a redhead his, episode yeah, or two. Yeah, his girlfriend. Yeah. yeah. She seemed I like a good fit. I can't remember her name but either, but I know. She seemed good. Didn't yeah. work out. Yeah. Didn't? Well, maybe, maybe that will back. work out. She was cute. Yeah, and she, she felt always come back. Yeah, she just felt like Shelby was a good, like, good good for Brick or that like he was going to be there for the baby so maybe for her it was like a selfless thing like he's helping this woman and her baby and there's no room for me you know he's got to help her so maybe now and they were in the same age group so that's Carol Carol Ann was that her name oh Carol Ann yeah Yeah. good memory thank you thank you I was like trying to think of it (laughs) this entire time (laughs) but so that all happens and Shelby's off so we will see her and Lindley another time apparently maybe they'll be like on the same flight somewhere (laughs) but the whole episode was revolving around saving Bluebell from this merger which was a three story arc basically and LaVon's putting on a show for this lieutenant governor he's literally making the whole like you guys I know you rehearse because you're actors and you have lines but like the people of Bluebell might as well just be actors because they are constantly putting on a show for everyone (laughs) it's so funny and like everybody had their little part they had to play and Cricket in her crazy outfit and all of that I just couldn't. <laughs> the outfits were ridiculous. So, so we were all laughing at them when they came. I, I mean, they were kind of cute, but just like very elaborate. And the girls uh, always wear their antebellum dresses mm-hmm, like, for any reason. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know. And you guys always get to. Oh well, we didn't even get to talk to you about you because you were in here last week. But you had like cell costume. Oh, yeah. You guys get some fun stuff to wear. <laughs> yeah, I know. We never know what it's gonna be. 
Last last episode was so much fun though, because yeah. uh, it was we all there's however many eight or ten of us and we were all working together and yeah. We were had dance rehearsals for a couple of days. It's like you're I on mean, Glee we, or something. You I know dance that's what sing. it felt like. <laughs> we rehearsed that cell dance for two days. Oh you would gosh. never know it. That's so <laughs> you funny. You would never know it. We actually said we thought it was good. Like when Joel was like, "It's so bad." We're like, "Oh, we thought that was actually yeah, pretty the dance, good." Like, the dance was good. <laughs> yeah, the concept that's for good. the play show whatever was a little ridiculous. Yeah, but I mean, the dancing and the singing was good. Oh, well, so. that's fantastic. Yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah, we were all thrown off by Joel's remarks. We we're like, what? <laughs> hey. But um, so yeah, so they're putting on this show. Basically, everybody's doing their little part, and it ends, you know, with the bomb being dropped. Like, are we going to have this baby daddy? But to be honest, the historic part came from your TV show, Husband. Yes. So basically, you guys are in possession of this commode. Yeah. That was signed. Everyone scoffed at it, but it actually ended up being the one historical object in the town. Right? That was signed (laughs) by who was it? Andrew Jackson? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would have liked to have seen the toilet. Yeah. I know. I'm really curious what a toilet from. That time period was. I know. Like. It's probably just like a bowl. Yeah, it's like an ground? outhouse, yeah. right? Yeah, isn't it just a hole in the ground at that point? I don't, I don't know. know. I'm sure what the writers had a hard time figuring that out too. So they're like, That's we will we never see it. it. <laughs> It'll just be known that it's there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. But you guys are so funny. You guys as the cu- like, you are like the town couple that like will never have an issue. I know. We're the Ever. only ones. You can. You have like gotten married and stayed and married. Stayed and, married. And, right. And so are the babies Seemed coming for yeah. you too? God, I have no idea. <laughs> I know. I thought maybe they would come this year, and then Shelby was pregnant. I was like, oh, oh darn. I don't know if they can have two Dude. pregnant women i know i know but next week we have a bachelor party so that'll be yeah. exciting yeah oh that's gonna be a and lot tom of is actually dancing yeah <laughs> yes yes as you saw in the previews tom and meatball are the dancers for the uh, bachelorette party it's going to be that'll really be fun. exciting yeah because bluebell saved <laughs> everybody can go about their business and do their other crazy mm-hmm. things um so is there anything coming up that you're really excited about for your character or um, yeah, I mean, there's some fun stuff in store for Tom and Wanda. I, next episode, I believe, um, there's a reason Tom is having to dance for money. <laughs> so he's trying to earn a little extra cash for us. Um, I want, Wanda's like pimping him out. She's yeah. Like, kind of like dance, Tom. <laughs> um, they're trying to expand. I, Wanda and uh, Tom are taking on a lot, on a lot of animals. Oh, uh. So, in addition anyway, to the bees, yeah, yeah, they oh always gosh. have a lot of animals. So, oh yeah, that has something to do with that's the next so week. funny. <laughs> yeah, all of these episodes, like every week, I feel like it's so elaborate, and there's always such a funny storyline. So, that's funny. But um, so this year, you know, you're on the show season three. What's been different yeah. this year for you guys? Have you like taken a different turn? Or? Um, you know, I mean, it's been pretty steady. I don't know. I feel like one. I feel like. Everybody else in the town is so crazy and there's so much drama constantly happening and people are always breaking up and getting back together. And I feel like so Tom and Wanda are kind of the only ones who are like stable and I feel like you kind of need that, Mm -hmm. I guess. So you're not. They're like the safe place. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. And um, you guys, this episode, I meant to ask, I like noted it down. That like last scene where you guys are all at the Rammer Jammer, that must have been fun. I feel like everybody was there. Yeah, yeah. It's always fun when we have days like that, when everybody is shooting. Um, Because there can be times when you go, you know, weeks without seeing someone because you're just not in a scene with them. So I always look forward to those big scenes, although they always, you know take a long time because there's so many people and there's so many things to shoot but right it's fun i bet to have everybody on set what's like a typical day for you though like are you there every day of the week or does it depend on the week totally depends on the week um yeah sometimes you know it can be just once a week depending on the episode sometimes it's as often as you know five days a week so yeah it's pretty fun that's nice yeah and you guys have a great cast too We have a best cast. And I was actually talking to, because I um, was talking to one of our casting directors, and I was like, gosh, that's so lucky that everybody just happened to be able to sing and perform, you know, on stage Mm -hmm. like that. And and they said that actually they look for actors who have theater backgrounds. Oh, wow. Yeah, which is great, because so many of us do. Brandy, who plays cricket. Right. Scott. um, And Scott. Laura Belundi. Yeah. Yeah. And Carla, who plays Elodie. And um, the other Carla. Yeah, I mean, everybody. Yeah, yeah, lots of people. Wow. Um, So, yeah, last week's episode was particularly fun for us. Um, 
And then I really had a good time doing the um, the little vaudeville, like, opening number mm-hmm. that Tom mm-hmm. and I did. <laughs> that was cute. I was like, oh, I can't believe there's crickets. You know, nobody was <laughs> laughing, but... We oh, laughed. I like the, what was it? The cabaret slash cabernet joke. I laughed during that. Uh, I, mean, I don't know. It might have been a little I know. That's kind of my sense of humor. I'm like, I like, it's a lame joke. I love it. No, but it was funny. <laughs> I laughed. So do you get to do some theater stuff? Like when you're not at, working on Heart of Dixie, do you do that in your spare time? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I used to do all theater in New York. And um, and then since I've been out here, I've just been working on the show. And um Work, I went to, I don't know if I was here the last time if I had worked on the movie Parkland. You did, yeah. you did. Oh, okay. So, yeah, so when I worked on that, and uh, now I'm, yeah, I'm, I would love to get involved in some theater out here now that I'm a little more settled. Right, I know. LA, I, I feel like everybody thinks it's only TV, but there is some stuff going There's on out here. definitely yes. some good theater. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Definitely. And how, how was that with Parkland, though? So we saw you, at, like, right after you filmed it. I think you told us a lot oh, about nice. it, but we didn't get to talk to you after. Yeah. Oh, my God. It was so much fun. Um, I actually, so it was produced by Tom Hanks's production company, um, Playtone, and I went by to see them like back in December, just because I was like, oh, I should check in, and I was just, I just thought I was meeting with his producing partner, Gary, and I went in, and we're sitting at Playtone in Santa Monica, and it's like the coolest thing ever. I wa- they put me in this room for a second when I got there, and there's like Emmys, and there's. Wow. Like, yeah, movie posters of all the shows and movies that they've done. Um, And then we're just all hanging out talking, and they're like, oh, it's so funny, Tom Hanks is just in your chair. (laughs) And I was like, get out. And Uh, I totally, like, I don't get too, I I can, like, keep my cool, even though I'm, like, you know, butterflies on the inside. But this one, I just, yeah, I got so starstruck. (laughs) (laughs) And I just was like, what, get out. And they're like, no, somebody go grab Tom. He's right upstairs. Oh. And literally, like, half a minute later, Tom Hanks comes walking in the door. And I was just like, oh, my God. <laughs> Dream yeah. come true. It was very so cool. cool. And he sat down. We talked for, like, 15 minutes. It was so cool. He was very nice. That's so fun, too, that it was, like, a surprise. Like, you didn't yeah. know it was happening. I had no idea. Oh. You know, you sometimes people are have a company, and you just, like, figure that, oh, they're not really doing anything. But he's, like there all the time they said so Uh, and he seems like the nicest guy I mean when you watch his interviews and just learn about him he was so nice we were talking about he was saying how he he uh, thinks he pays too much for his cable and I was like Tom Hanks has to pay for cable (laughs) like he's got to be on every channel all the time they're always like playing his movies how do they not give it to him for free I know they should give it to him for free like if you're on more (laughs) than two channels like within the month you get it for free exactly oh so funny so cool I know I felt like I was on a little Tom Hanks like Rainbow Road, <laughs> a little high. So funny. But you had that movie. Is there anything that you have coming yeah. up that you want people to know about? I'm working on some projects, but unfortunately, I don't know if there's anything that I can like really say for sure yet. Um, but uh, yeah, you well, you know, I do my little web series, right? Oh, going to, yeah, yeah. I'll ask you about so that, I'm going to bring that back. Um, but in the, in the meantime, I actually wrote a screenplay with a good friend of mine who's a writer. And so we kind of incorporate, because I had like this long list of all these really awkward moments. And I was like, God, some of these I'd like to see in a movie. (laughs) Oh, gosh. (laughs) And so, yeah. (laughs) So we just started writing. And uh, yeah, so we're kind of in the process of like rewrites and then also just trying to figure out how to make a movie, how you do that. That's exciting. Yeah, it's really fun. So they can probably follow you on Twitter and stuff to find out like when that stuff's happening. Exactly. Perfect. Yeah. And so I, if that, everybody... Follow her. It's what at Mallory A. a. Moy. Okay. Yes, there's a Mallory Moy out there, and she beat me to <laughs> Gmail and to my Twitter handle. Awesome. <laughs> I hate when that happens. I know. I <laughs> have two R's on the end of my name because I was like, C. Archer was already taken on everything. I so. know. You're like blast. Oh. Okay. If you're out there, I would trade you. They can, like, you can I'm buy it set from people. Like, I've heard of people no buying way. back a Twitter name so they can have the one they want. Wow, I bet wow. that could get expensive. If I'm you're, like, sure. The right person. <laughs> but yeah. people do that, especially with celebrities. They, like, take celebrity names, and then the celebrity has to, like, buy it from them so they can huh. be easily found oh, on social media. Wow. Right. We need to find, like, up-and-coming celebrities and steal their names before they get to Yeah. <laughs> we'll get into the business of <laughs> stealing Twitter so, names. Don't do that. Don't Side do that. Job. <laughs> yeah, no, because now Mallory has to put an A in her Twitter hand. <laughs> but right. so, guys, follow her if you want to keep up with what she's yeah, doing. Thank because you. you do tweet a lot. You're pretty active on social I'm, media. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm doing my best. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, why don't we get into some predictions then for the show? And you can, yeah. we'll have to watch Mallory and see if anything's right. 
<laughs> we always like to see poker face. <laughs> and now, your After Buzz TV predictions. Alright, who's starting? Anyone? Do you have you always one? have the good predictions. Michelle. I have a good one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so my prediction is that if and when Joel and Zoe break up, it won't necessarily be because they have some conflict in their relationship but maybe it'll be because his career is like pulling him back to new york or something Ooh, like the book takes off mm. yeah i mean even though he's a writer and i guess he could do that from wherever he needs to but right sure. yeah i'm just having a really hard time seeing them breaking up at least any time within the next i i i mean well with how don't get me wrong with how quickly that the breakups happen today maybe <laughs> they will actually just have something that happens kind of quickly and i think you're right i don't think it will be because they're having an issue they seem to resolve any like issue that they have, but I don't know. I don't see it coming up anytime in the immediate future, at least. Yeah, I agree with that. I don't think it's immediate, but I think it will build up to like something bigger. Like I don't actually think it'll be because of his career. I think it might be because of something within their relationship. Because you know, even with this house thing, one of them has to cave and give up what they want. And not that you, you're going to have to do that in a relationship, anyways. There's always compromise. But if there's other things weighing down, which I think we saw foreshadowing of the fact that maybe there's still some stuff between Zoe and Wade, buying a house and all of the the stress that comes with it and the pressure to get married, like this whole episode with Harley saying, "You guys aren't married. Like, aren't you guys going to get married and have kids? Mm-hmm. You can't have a kid here." It's like. All of that, I think, will weigh heavily on Zoe, especially, where she's just found, like, family and she's getting used to her life. I don't know. What got me about that interaction where Harley was saying, oh, yeah, you guys look like you're married already, was I feel like when people, or I mean, he's a little kid, but regardless, when anyone usually says that to a couple, they kind of, like, freak out a little or at least they're like, oh, you know, like, no, we're not. We're not at that point yet. But they were just like, oh, yeah, I guess we are. Which was a little strange. I mean, it, that certainly doesn't say that they're breaking up anytime soon to me, at least. But right. I don't know. It's a little and weird. Do we think, I'm thinking we're out of the clear because we were talking to Marcia and she said that there was a big breakup coming. Isn't that what she said? And so we thought it was going to be Annabeth and Levon just because they're like the steady couple right now. Mm-hmm. Are we thinking that George and Lindley and Brooke and Shelby are the breakup? I think that's probably mm. what she was talking about. Yeah. I, I think. What do you think? Yeah? I don't know, to be honest. They just, AB and LaVon just seem in a good I know. place. I and they're like so cute. Together. No, they're going to have trouble. <laughs> <laughs> you say you don't know, but now you think they have trouble. Well, no, what I said, what I meant by saying I don't know is I don't know what she was speaking oh, about okay. when she said that's going to be the next big breakup. I mean, mm-hmm. well, yeah, she didn't say like, them. We assumed it was them, but it's kind of subjective. Mm-hmm. You think they're going to have trouble, though? Still. I read it on the showrunners were doing an interview and it said that Uh-oh. Levon and Lemon are gonna have Levon, Levon and Lemon. And <laughs> Levon and Annabeth are gonna have trouble. Not to spoil the show, but I don't know if they're gonna break up, but they are Yeah, because trouble, trouble can mean anything, really. I don't know. Yeah, we'll see. Well, I hope, you hope they stay so. together because they are very cute, and I feel like that would just be one too many breakups for this season. There's just so many different relationships, and I also foresee solely because of checking Jamie's Instagram and Twitter and stuff that she'll be back soon. Do we yeah. know what do you know what episode she comes back? Like is that something you could tell us? Or? Um I honestly don't remember which episode she comes back, but I think it's pretty soon. That's so vague. <laughs> well no, it just we we're <laughs> doing the timeline. Soon. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think she's it's pretty soon. Okay. So we'll keep our, our eyes out for her. But any other big predictions yeah. for anybody? Mine's sort of a question because I don't have a really good answer, I guess. But what do you guys think about um Wade and Vivian. Valerie, for some reason, came to mind, but Wade and Vivian. Mm. Uh, I think they're really cute, and I liked, you could see the passion and the chemistry, and I think, like we've said before, she's very similar to Zoe, which makes it seem like an easy fit for Wade, but I think the idea of having a child and this whole responsibility Wade would have to have, I think this relationship will help him mature and be a bigger man and kind of really, you know, grow as a person. I don't think it's going to be for the long run, because she's probably looking for a ma- she's already been married you know she wants mm-hmm. a marriage and somebody stable for Harley not something that's just going to be temporary speaking of really quickly because I think we're going to get yelled at if we don't talk about this uh, Harder Dixie got a little like graphic tonight with the Ooh, I was surprised sure I, was, yeah, I was sitting next to Mallory <laughs> and I was like what this is new <laughs> but I mean I guess good for them but 
Yeah. I know. Finally, like. I was going to say also, they always have the best lingerie. Like, Zoe's always just wearing like the cutest underwear. And I would want to be like, <laughs> nobody does this. Like, who has that? But then we see Meatball and Tom, and their underwear is like not the cutest. Mm-hmm. So maybe it's just the ladies who know what they're doing. <laughs> yeah. Like, there's like one so. underwear store in Bluebell, and it only sends, like, sells really nice bras. And yeah. that's what they all wear. <laughs> I know. They all have it. They yeah. do. Yeah. Lindley and who else have we seen? Zoe, oh, Vivian. Zoe, Vivian. Yeah. Even Lemon, I feel like that time she had her head stuck in the. Yeah. Yeah. bed mm-hmm. foot rest or you know yeah and the yeah I don't know maybe we'll see some Wanda Tom action <laughs> <laughs> oh my god they're we too laugh. wholesome we laugh about what Wanda and Tom's like may you know make out scene with the bike like even just in private like they're so like wholesome like what happens behind I closed know. doors <laughs> Oh, oh my Lord. god! Any predictions? I know you obviously know more than us, but anything that hasn't I don't happened know much more than you though. Is there anything you want to happen though that hasn't happened that you're um, looking for? I would like to see Brick finally like find someone who he can kind of settle down with. Mm-hmm. Um, someone who Lemon likes. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That would benefit the girlfriend. Um, and uh, and yeah, I would like. I, I still am rooting for like Wanda and Tom to have a baby, a baby, a baby. And, like twins. Although I I think I say that, and then I think about like actually having to work with a baby, and I'm like, ooh, that sounds really complicated. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so <laughs> they so take we'll a, they have like certain hours they can work and like uh, yeah nap time exactly. So I'm like, hmm, maybe. maybe. I think it would be for cute. now just the animals. The animals are second. pretty. That's fun. like the first the step. Are you get the animals, test it out, see yeah. how it goes, and then maybe get some. And then maybe yeah, very funny. I, I hope we see that too. But until we do, guys, you can keep the conversation going on iTunes. You can comment, rate, tell us what you're thinking about this show. And also on Twitter, you can follow AfterBuzzTV at AfterBuzzTV. You can follow myself at Paige Sell. And you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Archer. I'm Michelle Renee, and you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Michelle Renee TV. I'm Mallory Moy, and you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Mallory A. Moy. Thank you so much for joining us, Mallory. Thank you, ladies. Great to have, to you. have you back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys, and we will see you next week. (laughs) From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.